In this lecture, we're going to deal with a more challenging problem examining the time value of money. But once again, we're only going to use two formulas. And those two formulas are the present value formula. So present value equals future value divided by 1 plus r to the power t. And the second formula we we're going to use is the annuity formula. The present value at time small t is equal to the periodic payment that starts at time t plus 1 divided by the discount rate all multiplied by 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus the discount rate to the power of capital T. And with these two formulas we're going to work through any problem that involves the time value of money. Last lecture we looked at how much money we would need to save so that our kids could go to college. This time we're going to complicate the example somewhat. So in eight years time your child will be attending college and you estimate that to cover the cost of college you're going to need $95,000 in eight years time. And your bank is offering a savings account with an APR of 5.5% compounded monthly. The last time we dealt with this problem we just focused on how much you would have to invest today in order to have 95000 in eight years time. But that's not very realistic. What's much more realistic is that you're going to decide to make a monthly payment into your savings account. And over time that will build up to $95,000. The question is how much do you have to save each month in order to have $95,000 in eight years time. What the question is really asking is saying we have $95,000 in 96 months. What payment would we have to make each month to ensure that at 96 months we have $95,000 in our savings account? As soon as we see a regular payment being made we think about the annuity formula. And we know the annuity formula is that the present value at time small t is equal to the payment at time t plus 1 divided by r or multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r to the power capital T. What we want to find is the value of c. We know what R is. R is going to be equal to 0 0.055 divided by 12, which is 0 0.004583. T, we know, is 96 months. And we want to find C. The problem is we don't have the present value we only have the future value. What we need is to get the present value. How do we calculate the present value? Well to calculate the present value we're going to use our present value future value formula and if we substitute in the numbers we get 95,000 divided by 1.004583 to the power 96 which equals 61,246.95. Well, now we can use the annuity formula. The annuity formula didn't have future value in it, but it did have present value. And we know that the present value is equal to, the present value at time t is equal to ct plus 1 divided by r all multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r to the power of capital T. If we fill the numbers in, we now know that the present value at time t is going to be 61,246.95 and that is going to be equal to our payment c divided by the discount rate, which is 0 
all multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1.004583 to the power capital T, which is 96. So I get 61246.95 is equal to C divided by 0 0.004583 all multiplied by 0 0.3552953. Now I can solve for C. So C is going to be equal to 61246.95 multiplied by 0 0.004583 and it will all be divided by 0.3552953 To get C on its own, first multiply both sides by 0 0.004583 and that will cancel out this. The next thing we would do is then divide both sides by 0 0.3552953. That would cancel out this and we would be left with this expression. If we do the calculation we get C is equal to $790.03. In other words, if you want to save each month so that your kid can go to college in eight years' time, and the cost of college in eight years' time is $95,000, you would have to save $790.03 every month. This was a more complicated but more realistic example. Now let's reverse the problem. Suppose a trust fund has been set up for your kid and your parents contribute $790.03 per month with the first payment starting next month. They're going to make payments for the next 96 months. The monthly interest rate is 0.4583%. The question now is, how much will the fund be worth in eight years' time? Can we use the annuity formula to calculate the future value? That's what we've been asked to calculate. The question is, how much will this trust fund be worth in 96 months' time? We can't use the annuity formula because the annuity formula deals with present value, not future value. Here is our annuity formula. And you can see nowhere in here do we have future value. But if we can calculate present value, we know that present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r to the power t which means if we know the present value, we can calculate the future value. The future value is going to be equal to the present value, all multiplied by 1 plus r to the power t. In other words, we can use a two-step approach to solve this problem. Step one is calculate the present value of the annuity. Step two is calculate the future value given the present value. Step one, we're going to get the present value is equal to the payments, which are 790.03, divided by the interest rate, 0 0.004583, all multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1.004583 to the power 96. And if we do that sum, we get... 61,246.95. That's the present value 
of these annuity payments that your parents are going to make. All we need to do now to calculate the future value is use the formula. Future value equals present value times by 1 plus r to the power t, which equals 61246.95 times by 1.004583 to the power 96, which equals 95,000. So we've successfully reversed the problem and checked our answers. These tools for present value and future value, combined with the annuity formula, are very powerful indeed. Any problem in the time value of money can be solved using these simple tools. In class, we're going to deal with some more complicated examples, but the same principles apply. You have to break the problem down into its key elements and think about what inputs do we need to get our answer and then how can we get towards that answer. Sometimes it will take two steps, sometimes it takes one step. The trick is to write out the timeline, write down the formulas you think you're going to use and then things become much simpler. That's all I want to cover for now. See you in class.